In this episode, we talk about managing our energy through surrender and acceptance. And what we mean by that is being able to retain more of our personal life force and life resources so that we have more of it available to go towards the things that mean the most to us. I'm Sienna. And I'm Toast. We've been partners in life, love, and music since 2001. And we believe life is best lived as a love story. Your love story. After all, to love well is to live well. For more, check out SiennaAndToast.com. But for now, here's this episode. Wow. Wow, low, low. You know, that... Okay, so Toast and I just had leftover Thai food for lunch. I, that just wiped me out. Like, now do you want to take don't a you long feel tired? nap? I do want to take a long nap. And I think that, you know, our bodies are not used to take out food. Our bodies are so used to our own cooking. Our own cooking. And there's a lot That's to it. say about that. <laughs> <laughs> From boredom to just it being healthier because we know yeah. what we're putting in it. But man, normally I don't feel like I need a nap after Thai food. <laughs> We just maybe I'm we, like, what's happening? What's happening? <gasps> Whoa, my eyes are heavy. Oh my gosh. It's so weird. It's, you know what it is too? It's all the chemicals and all the sugar, you know? Right. The kinds of oils. It's all of that. That we it's, don't know. It's the bad oils. I mean, you know. And yet, we have oh, to admit. It was delicious. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everything in oh moderation. Oh my God. Okay. Right. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today. I do have to say that I'm so glad you folks are here. And at day 74 of self-quarantine, I, the introvert, I, the homebody, I, the empath who loves to just be alone, I have to say that I am now, I need to get out. <laughs> I need people. People. <laughs> Isn't there a song? I need Barbara some people. To... Who need people? Are the love. Well, how does it go? I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah. But I need some people. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it took me, I think last episode, we might have mentioned that. I think I shared a little. Like yes. I'm feeling yes, a little did. bit. You know, so now seven days later, I feel it. I was thinking this past week of, about that and wondering if we would have been good candidates for, you know, those those people who are, are going to like live on Mars, you know, in a confined space with very few other people. No, that's scary to me. Okay. Because <laughs> I'd be afraid of like Having aliens. To- Aliens, yeah, or like yeah. I don't know. Okay, I yeah. believe in them. Yeah. There are limits, even for introverted, empathic, <laughs> uh, highly sensitive people. Plus, I feel like it would wreck my. I I can't be like floating around. Oh, you know, yeah, because you get motion sickness. Yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. be doing that okay. in my ear. Okay. The well, pressure, you we'll, know, on we'll my take ears. That off of, we'll take that off of your uh, <laughs> your list of to dos. <laughs> I do not want that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let me get it together. Why don't you talk and let's about go something? on more walks. That will help. I went that for a walk help. by myself yesterday, and that, that really did help. Uh, among our quarantine adventures this past week was... Well, wait. But you know what, what I don't want to happen? What? Because we are so inside. Yeah. Like, I don't want to become so socially awkward. I know. You know, yeah, where you're yeah. just uh-huh, like, uh-huh. you see someone and you don't right. even know right. how to handle yourself. Right. Yeah. You know? Uh-huh. I had a short like, com- oh my God, there's a person. Well, we had a short conversation with our neighbors about that. Did we? From a safe distance the other day. And oh, they yeah, com- we did. And, and there's a good segue did. because you got a compliment about the haircut that you gave me. Oh, yes. In our bathroom this past week. Yes. It's really messy to get your hair cut. Oh, my God. Isn't it yep. amazing? Yep. I couldn't 
the cleanup even, probably even took longer up, than the haircut. Maybe, but yeah, even after I cleaned up, there was like, there's hair here too. Like, I know. What? And I, there's hair over there. Like, how did it get there? What? And Toast is is the type of person <laughs> who like you can't have little sand on you. You can't have like little hair bits on you. <laughs> yeah, it's such a weird How thing. Like yeah, well, you are like that. Well, the whole point of of bringing this up was to say <laughs> that Sienna did a very impressive job having only had YouTube training uh, and using an old hair clipper set from Con Air. I think we used it on Bear too. And then we used, it, we used it that we used on our cat <laughs> yeah, for his pantaloons. But you know the your... back, all that fur that just yeah. goes. Phew. Yeah, did we? I don't know. Yeah, but, we did. But you did a fantastic job. I'm very happy with my haircut. Um, but it is one of our goals to do a second haircut like pretty soon. tomorrow. <laughs> so that I can, well, that first haircut I think is going to be, it was probably the hardest for me because you had, your hair was so long. Yeah. yeah it was like just so long and yeah. Toast's hair is so thick. So it's like, oh my God, it's like getting that <laughs> like thing fur. through it. Yeah. But, um, but I'm proud of my work and I, I just... Guess- but I get a little obsessed, you know, I'm, you know mm-hmm. how I kept going, wait, right here, I need mm-hmm. to, yeah. and we were done already. Yeah. And you're like, okay, holding your head over the <laughs> kitchen sink. <laughs> and I'm just grabbing kitchen drawer scissors <laughs> to cut the little piece. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. Anyways, but YouTube, YouTube's amazing. I would just play a section, pause it, play it, study it. Okay, pause it. Amazing. Yeah. Spray bottle of water mm-hmm. for the hair. Yeah, yeah. But it was it was a tough week. In fact, by the end of the week, um, I oh, felt like we actually needed gosh. a drink. Yes, which is rare for us. Um, I can't even one of our think of another week that we felt that way. To have a drink? Yeah, like an alcoholic drink. <laughs> <laughs> and we we did I always have... want a drink. Actually, I just you know. Really? Yeah. I mean, to just relax. But I will say, okay, so one of our very dear friends and also podcast listeners, actually, we met, that's how we met. He found our podcast. Um, Ken Tara, you folks might, if you're longtime listeners, you might uh, recognize his name. But anyways, he sent to us these amazing, uh, I guess they're called vinegars, like sour, it's like cocktail mix drink things we don't know um, the name of it because we don't really drink <laughs> we don't know like what it's really called but you just mix it with like vodka or some kind of um, a hard liquor mm-hmm. and some fizzy water or a tonic um, but it has sugar in it so you don't you probably wouldn't want to use tonic you probably would want to use a, a regular just sparkling yeah in fact, sparkling soda it, water or something in fact these were designed for oh yeah the restaurant. non-alcoholic drinks yes yeah so these these are you could use it either way syrupy type things mm-hmm. um conceived by one of the chefs of pok 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 a place in it's several that restaurants thai? in um portland Fam- yeah famous portland restaurants yeah is that a thai place? um yes it is yeah. yes it is okay. yes uh so anyways it was a great reason to Let's try one of these. So the first flavor we tried was strawberry basil, strawberry basil. Um, and then when I went to get the vodka in our freezer, there was so little of it. <laughs> it was so sad and I didn't want to share with toast, uh, but I did. Um, and I will say how delicious it, it was. Mm-hmm. Wasn't it so good? Yep. And oh I my think- God, it was so good. <laughs> It was so good. good. And I've been drinking more of that mix oh. with just plain water. Yeah. Making my own kind of like a fruit punch type of thing. Yeah. Like a, yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. But it was so good. But I have to say that even, uh, when was the last time I drank? I don't know. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Probably that, a year ago. That small amount. Like I felt, my body felt really tired after. Yeah. Well, after a week. Or even, after but a even tough week. After just drinking alcohol. it. alcohol. 
and sitting there, yeah. I felt like my, my whole body relaxed. Like, <laughs> okay, I was so porous to the alcohol, I guess. I don't know. I don't In think I way. can drink really anymore. Well, we don't have any more vodka left, <laughs> so know, we drank it all. That's it. And then we were going, how are we going to get more vodka? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, there's got to be a way. But I know. We, this we might... haven't cared enough to research how, actually how to yeah, do that. Yeah, I mean, we're not, we, you know, yeah, just we're like not drinkers. fun drinkers. But we, um, and that might not even sound funny to you, people listening. <laughs> What? But one of the things about Portland is you can't go to the market and buy vodka. You Apparently. have to find a like a liquor store. Like there's some kind of law or something out here. It was surprisingly we could difficult not... to to find a bottle of vodka because yeah. the last time I tried to do that it was literally last year. Or I think around the same time. Um, you had to go to. So many places. And I ended up going to four, I think, four or five different places where, yeah. oh, you mean you're a, a beer store, but you have no vodka? I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. okay. And, you mm-hmm. know, go to a drug, drug store. Mm-hmm. No, no, there's nothing. There's wine, but yeah. there's no. Anyway. So that's it's not why a problem. It's not a problem. When we thought, how do we get more vodka now? There's got to be a way. <laughs> All right, I think let's let's move on. So now you're caught up with how our last week went. Yeah. So yeah, let's move on to the main topic here. Okay, surrender and acceptance. So I will share that my day job has been extremely demanding for probably the last, I would say, four weeks maybe four to six weeks. Um, and I am waiting for it to get better. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes I see some glimmers, glimmers of light at the end of the tunnel. But uh, recently I have been having weeks where there are so many meetings, so many meetings. Um, and on one particular day, it was like, oh my God, Are we just like, I just had maybe seven meetings and I knew that day I'm like, oh my God, I have a meeting. I have my eighth meeting. Oh my God, I have my eighth meeting. Big eye roll and for the, me here. And the, and the feeling, you know, so I think this was like now like a, a Friday um, and I woke up knowing that, oh, I have that meeting today and I felt like, oh, I don't want to go to the meeting. I don't want to go to the meeting. (laughs) And I just, I was so, (laughs) exactly. And I just felt so like, I don't want to, I don't want to be in the meeting. I don't want to be in the meeting. I don't want to be in the meeting. Like this sucks. And then, and then I'm in the meeting and in my head and the meeting's happening. But in my head, I'm like, oh, I don't want to be in this meeting. This meeting is so long. Oh, my God, this meeting's going so long. I don't want to be in the meeting. And I was just all my energy was <laughs> just wrapped up in the drama of not wanting to be in this meeting. And it wasn't even about the meeting, what the topic was or the people in the meeting I just felt like, okay, I'm, I'm over meetinged already, yeah, yeah. you know, and this last one just kind of pushed me over the edge. Mm-hmm. And so I was just weak and felt mm-hmm. just so susceptible to dramatizing. Um, and I think, uh, that happens for yeah. a lot of us oh, totally, when you're yeah. tired, when you're, you know, just off your game and, and, and the stressors just, you have no tolerance for it really. So yeah, because it, it does take energy to have a good attitude. It does. And so, but then I, I was realizing all of this going on in my head about not wanting to be in the meeting and I'm in the meeting and I, re- what is that sound? <laughs> Is there an animal in this room? I hear a pawing. Oh, yeah, it's bear. Oh, okay. (laughs) 
It's like this was going to turn into a horror film or something. <laughs> it's like, what is that? But I just realized like all my energy is wrapped up in this, in the drama of the, drama of the meeting versus the alternative, which could have been, okay, yeah, I don't want to be in this meeting, but here I am. I am in the meeting. And just accepting that that it's my reality for that moment, mm. you know, and when you just, when you just think about that for a moment, the feeling of, and this example of being in the meeting, not wanting to, and having your thoughts just in the drama of, I don't want to be in this meeting. Oh my God, I don't want to be in this meeting and how that feels mm -hmm. versus, oh, okay, I do not want to be in this meeting, but I'm in this meeting. And you're going to be in it. Yes. Like, it's not going to change. No. You're going to just, just continue you know, being in it. Right. And in that moment, I just felt like that type, that kind of acceptance, mm -hmm. what that really does for us is it creates an opportunity for just relaxation. And that might sound like, well, you're in a meeting, though. Could, could you really be relaxed? Yes. <laughs> Compared to giving into that drama and the resistance of being in the meeting, which was creating stress. Yeah. You know? So when I had that experience recently, I'm like, okay, let's talk about this. Because I know people feel this way. Yeah, the way I relate to it is it feels like the resisting part of things, and I have an example after this, okay. but the resisting part that you're talking about, to me, I guess it, it feels analogous to, or maybe it is the same thing as a, com a complaining, like a inner complaint. Instead of putting that same energy that, that was going to complaining, putting that energy instead towards, well, doing something about the problem that is being complained about. Mm. Yeah. And I guess in the meeting example, well, it was an, it, it's just problem, acceptance. Yeah. Really. Like, and, okay, I'm here. Yeah. And putting, putting attention towards, okay, what is being said in the meeting and what problems, right, what problems are present. trying to be addressed within the meeting yes. and what tasks fall to me and deliverables and timeframes mm -hmm. and all that stuff mm -hmm. instead of being like, I don't want to be here. Right. Yeah. For me, okay, so my example. Oh, I, I want, can I say something about that okay, yeah. other thing? Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I feel like, um, I think when we find ourselves in that complaining, the resistance, the, mm -hmm. all, all of that, every time I say the resistance, I think of Star Wars. <laughs> Isn't that Star Wars? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's um, also hashtag resist. Yes. Uh, but I think that those are the moments where we are called to find the gratitude, right? Like having gratitude in that moment, which might be a stretch at times, right? You know, that's the work part for but, sure. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I can be, I can have gratitude in that meeting when I find myself complaining mm -hmm. um, that, okay. This is an income, you know, mm -hmm, right, where a lot of people right. don't have that right now. Right. They've lost like their main source of income. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, we have an income mm -hmm. and I can be in that, in the gratitude of that. Right. And maybe more easily accept being in the meeting. <laughs> being in the meeting. I am sure <sighs> we have that felt good. at least one. <laughs> person who's listening to this who is totally relating to this it's just With too all many the meetings. it's just too many you know like right anyways exactly we don't, let's, that's let's not go that's, that's not the point though that's, let's go that's, that's <laughs> let, let's stop resisting yeah yeah no, it's that's okay, what's so let's funny move on. what is that uh, i saw i saw like in a gift shop a long time ago <laughs> a gift shop yeah, the, oh. the kind that you could actually walk into yeah. and browse around with mm -hmm. other people. And pick everything and anything you want up, pick yeah. it up, look at it, mm -hmm. yeah. and put it back down. Mm -hmm. um, 
But there was, there was like one of those um, satin award ribbons, mm-hmm. and it said something like, um, "I attended another meeting that could have been an email." Ah, oh. that's the joke, right, about office meetings. Anyway, okay, I'd rather have emails than having to have a meeting. <laughs> Plus, it's more clear, you know. They it can't. Takes... People can't go. I well. No, I didn't say that. Paper trail. Yeah. You can always go, yes, you did right here. <laughs> third line, third sentence. <laughs> it does and you... it does help you to clarify your thinking to force you to yes. put things into writing. Yes. 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 Okay, we're going off on all kinds of tangents. But you said you had an example. So my example gonna... uh, is different, but I'm sure it relates. Well, let's I, just see. Okay, you be let's the judge see of that. About, let's see about that. One of my uh, struggles that I am working on solving and overcoming that I've noticed is that I tend to overschedule or overcommit to the amount of things I can do in a day or the amount of things that I can accomplish in a day. And I think I've realized that I have tended to do that because I'm being an optimistic person. And, you know, I'm really hoping that I can get these things done Mm -hmm. because conceptually, Mm -hmm. in my mind, I know how to get them done. So they don't seem like it would take that much time Yeah, because I know exactly how to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And I confuse knowing how to do something mm-hmm. with uh, the time it will take yeah. to do it. Yes. That's great awareness. So, so I, well, I think... Up, so are you surrendering to that fact about your limits on... Your limitation with concerning time? Well, I think... Y- yes. I think I've resist what I've where the resistance has shown up. I think mm-hmm. is I have resisted accepting that I have limited hours mm. that I am going to be awake and useful in a day, mm. and I have had resistance to accepting that a lot of those hours are already spoken for Mm -hmm. with things to just keep me alive and clean. Yes. Right? Yeah. Like preparing and eating food and cleaning up and cleaning myself Mm -hmm. and keeping other things around the house clean, like our clothes Like taking trash out. Right. Just the stuff that needs to get done. Processing mail. So I have had trouble accepting that the remaining hours that I have to actually get things done are are not are not enough for me to get everything that I wish I could get done in. Yeah. I, in other words, I need to face reality, accept and surrender mm-hmm. to the reality that I'm going to need to put a lot of the things on, on another day. Yeah. You know? And you know what that's going to do, though? You will start to feel, even though you might feel like, wow, I only have three things on my list. And you might feel down about that. Like, oh, I'm not being productive enough or whatever it might be. Because, of course, I'm only uh, worthy. Depend- if it's I dependent get things on done. how much you get done. Right. Yeah. That, that was a right. joke, by the way. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you're going to start to feel such pride in knowing yourself and going, I got those three things done. I want and you're, to feel that. And you're not going, and, you, and as you move forward, really knowing yourself and knowing how to schedule your week, you're not going to have, you're not going to have to keep moving everything over because you don't have time. Because even that act, that takes time. Fe- it takes time, but it also doesn't feel good. No, it like, takes what? your energy. 
I didn't get that. Oh, I got to move like it Like, I must be a loser. Oh, I still didn't do that again. Mm. Oh, here I am moving it for the fourth time. Oh, here I must I am be undependable to moving myself. Moving it to the next week. Yeah, so you're going to, so even if there's the three things or whatever it might be, you're going to feel so good about yourself and knowing yourself and being able to knock off your list, all those things. I want to do that. Yeah. But I, I've, I realize what that's going to take first is surrendering and accepting. Surrendering, yeah. Yep. Accepting that there's, there's only room for, for fewer tasks mm-hmm. in, in that day. Yeah, and even so. knowing... Yeah, anyways, I was going to talk about something that's totally another topic. But um, <laughs> jot it down for another episode. Yeah. You know, I, I also think, too, like this whole thing with... No, well, you know, now we're talking about, so like knowing yourself and, um, not resisting your situation, whatever's going on, surrendering and accepting the moment that you're in. I think we can also talk to relate to that in terms of food. Okay. Because people know, like exactly what we started with, I guess this is a good way to, to kind of end this podcast. But how I'm talking about the Thai food Mm -hmm. and like, oh my God, I'm wiped out. Like it's (laughs) taking my body so much energy to digest Mm -hmm. this food and the bad oil they use and all the sugar they use. I'm buttoning my jeans right now. (laughs) (laughs) That's like too much information for people. Um, But it's like food, you know, when you're going through your work day or your day whatever you have it's like when you eat the right things and the right things it's different for every for everybody right everybody responds to things differently and there's different needs but it's like your body you don't want to have to make your body work so hard and expend so much energy leaving little energy for yourself to do the things that you love to do right you know so it's not just um, when we're talking about energy, it's it's all kinds of energy. Yes. You know, yes. that life force, right? So if you're eating, if your body likes clean, fresh foods, and then because it can digest those fast, it's not a deterrent, you know, to... Because you usually run hot, so raw foods feel good yeah, to you. Yeah, maybe. And then you, instead of that, you eat all this heavy slug Fried food. chicken. Sl- I don't eat fried chicken. You don't even eat fried chicken. Right. I'm just giving you an example. Oh, okay. Fried chicken <laughs> or whatever. Um, your body has to expend so much energy. Right. So I feel like it's like, you know, when they're saying junk food, mm-hmm. it's it's kind of like that junk food and junk thoughts. <laughs> Hmm. That you take know, a lot of the energy. complaining thoughts, the junk thoughts, the resistance to things that expend so much energy, and then then there's very little left after. And you, who feels great after resisting something? The only no one feels great. Yeah, the only um, dim light that comes from that resisting dim light. The only dim light. Very there's there's. There is oh, some light, some good that you ca- feel okay, from it, but I think it's a very dim, sad, really oh, like sad it's a cheap kind of light. Hit. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because really you only feel good because you complained and you do, you get to feel like kind of like self-righteous almost. Really? I think. Oh. Hmm. I would say that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't see it like that. Well, I think it's, there's a difference between complaining Mm -hmm. and speaking up, right? Like you can tell the waiter, there's a fly in my soup in Mm -hmm. one of two different ways, right? Mm -hmm. At least, right? One could be like, you're an idiot. You guys suck. Look at this fly in my soup. Or you can say, excuse me, um, there's a fly in my soup. Could I please get a, you know, (laughs) a different dish, Right. And one is complaining and the other is speaking up. And I think the complaining one, there is the the payoff that is something that our ego gets, which Mm. is feeling like, look at these idiots. Mm. They don't know what they're doing. I'm, you know, I'm telling them that kind of thing. But that's why what I mean, where it's this pathetic kind of light. Right. Right. But I think um, 
what I was going to say that could be the, the hit or the cheap hit or whatever from maybe the internal complaining, like okay. say if it's not external to, for the ego, okay, or, you know, kind of thing, is just the, that addiction to drama. Yeah. You know, creating that drama for yep. yourself to feel alive. Because even if you're feeling, um, if you are feeling angry, irritated, it's a feeling. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it's almost better than feeling nothing. Right. You know? And it's it feels safer to feel angry and frustrated at a situation yeah. than it is to feel angry or frustrated about perhaps yourself. Right. I will say that I was very nice to a waiter many years ago. When I drank my, I was in a fancy hotel (laughs) banquet. Oh, this story. (laughs) And uh, they had beautiful crystal goblets uh, for your iced water. And I got there and I'm sitting down waiting for my food and picked up my beautiful crystal glassware um, and drank, took a sip from it. And felt the ice kind of, you know, hit my lip a little. And then I felt a curious little bump against my lip. That wasn't the ice because it wasn't cold like that. I look in my water. There is seriously... (laughs) Only in Hawaii, folks. A five-inch frozen pale white gecko lizard with gold eyes, arms spread out, legs spread out, floating in my crystal goblet. <laughs> and he touched I'm my I'm glad lip. you can laugh about that now. Because I that like lizards. That's sound, why. Well, I mean, no, I don't want to. frozen dead. I know, but... <laughs> Poor freaking gecko. And Holy. I said, excuse me. So I didn't demean anybody. Yeah, I didn't you were very need quiet a hit. About it. You didn't, I didn't stand up and shout. Hit. No, like, oh my God, there's a lizard in my water. No, I didn't do that. I said, excuse me, there's a lizard in my water? Could I get another <laughs> water? He was mortified. As but, he should have been. You know, I think he, the, that poor lizard probably got into the ice machine. And when they scooped up the ice, there he went in my glass. Gosh. But his arms were, you know, I felt so bad for him because how long was he well, in that? Well, yeah, I felt bad thing. for him too. That's so. Hmm. He was so Although, cute. Although, aren't, aren't geckos cold blooded? Well, just... not frozen. They're, they can't well, survive. I know they're not going to survive being frozen, but uh, anyway. Okay. You mean, so why would he even so go into the ice machine? That was the fly in your Is that what you're saying? story. No, I was trying to imagine the experience he had of dying. Don't know. Why would you do that? Because you're accepting the moment you're in. Because I'm thinking about the poor (laughs) creature. Well, I kissed him. So maybe I sent him off to heaven in a nice way. Yeah, in a princely kind of fashion. Yes. Um... uh, (laughs) But yes, all right. Yes, on the contention about resisting and complaining, being mm-hmm. a, you know, when we're stuck, and it's so easy to do this. I mean, it that's is. the the uh, the air that we breathe on social media is all of this uh, drama and trauma and getting offended and resisting and you know, mm-hmm. um, raising a fist mm-hmm. and shaking it at whoever and you know, all that kind of stuff. So. And actually too, I will say that because, um, the, the, my day job has been so full and stressful. I have not been up on my Instagram posting. And for any of you who follow our Instagram, you might be like, Oh wow. They just, they hardly post now. Um, but even that I was resisting the reality of my schedule. And just, you know, and feeling so badly and feeling down on myself, like, oh my God, I'm not posting what I'm supposed to be posting. And 
all kinds of stress and drama around that instead of really surrendering to the schedule that I'm involved in right now and accepting that this is what is right now. You know, things change, right? And accepting that, okay, you know, I think the posting will probably happen Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And to let that be okay. Mm, I see. And that energy feels so, like, it's a relief. You know, it's like, right, okay, because you're solving that the can problem. be okay. Right. It, it can be okay. Like, who, right. And I'll, and I'll do three things in a day instead of right. trying to do 10 yeah. and only doing three anyway. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, just solve the problem yes. and, and conserve yes. the energy. Yes. Like instead of solving. instead of posting Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday and Sunday, it's okay that I post Friday, Saturday and Sunday. It's okay. Like it really is okay, right? <laughs> but yes. I was resisting the whole change mm-hmm. and trying to keep things the same and trying to deliver and it was just adding so much stress. Mm-hmm. So there is there's a lot to say about surrendering Apparently. and accepting. Yeah, there's over thirty minutes worth. Well, all right. I guess we spent. Well, the we first fit lizard in doing there, and we fit yeah. Thai food in there, and haircuts. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you got something out of this episode. We really, really do. And again, our hearts go out to you wherever you may be on this amazing planet, listening through the wonders of technology to the two of us here in Portland, Oregon. So we send you our love and our hearts and our support wherever you may be from Portland, Oregon. So as always, we're all about remembering, we're reminding ourselves and you, it's about progress, not perfection. So until next time, this is Sienna and this is Toast inviting you to come and live your love story. 